DNP3 Basics, Lesson 1, Overview. This is the first of a 13-part lesson on DNP3 protocol. The first four are available on YouTube in the CDONE channel. The complete set of 13 are available at www.cdonecal.com. The intent of these lessons is to make you, the viewer, knowledgeable with the terminology and operation of DNP3 protocol. It is not the intent to teach you how to be able to program a device to communicate in DNP3. Rather, it is to teach you how to communicate knowledgeably with others about DNP3. For example, someone asks you what class includes binary points, what variation is used to report counter events, or what on time is transmitted for CROBS. Right now, those questions might make you want to leave the room, but wait. By the end of these videos, you will understand the questions. Look forward to learning a new language. This DMP3 class is presented in 13 lessons. Lessons 1 to 12 plus a summary. Calling the lessons with these names lets me omit lesson 13, which everyone in the U.S. would be upset with. A summary of what each lesson covers is 1. Overview of SCADA, SCADA terminology, and how DNP3 fits into the picture. 2. Overview of DNP3 protocol, and in particular, what parts are being covered in these classes and what parts are not. DNP3 is a complicated protocol. Not everything can be discussed in an introductory class. 3. DNP3 message structure overview, data link, transport, and application layers. 4. Details of the data link layer. 5. Details of the transport layer. 6. Application layer, function codes, and internal indications. 7. Application layer, object group headers and qualifiers. 8. Application layer, object structure for input points. 9. Application layer, object structures for output points. 10. Application layer, class data poles. 11. Application layer, unsolicited data. 12. Application layer, other message and object structures. And the summary is a final summary lesson showing detailed message examples and providing some, subs some subset level overview information that would have been misplaced to mention earlier. While there may be many applications for DNP3 protocol, the main one and the only one that will be discussed in these lessons is the SCADA industry. That is, the use case we will be discussing will be DNP3 in a SCADA environment, and in particular, SCADA for electrical power systems. Limiting the industry this way makes some dialogue simpler. This is the first lesson of the set and will cover definition of SCADA, SCADA devices, and how DMP3 fits into a SCADA system. Terminology will be definition of master and outstation and input and output point types. Before we get started, you may hear some people talk about DNP3 protocol. 
and others refer to it as the IEEE 1815 standard. What is the difference? None. DNP3 was developed in the 1990s by a Canadian company who made the protocol available for free. It became popular and widely used. Because of its wide use, it was eventually adopted by IEEE as IEEE Standard 1815. In these lessons, I may use the term DNP3 or the term IEEE 1815. In each case, the decision on which to use was based only on what magically appeared out of the keyboard as this was being written. Please do not assume any significance if one term is used over the other. What actually is DNP3 protocol? DNP3 is a communication protocol used primarily for SCADA applications in the electrical power industry. As said, there are other use cases, but discussions will be limited to this one. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. A SCADA protocol is used to communicate between a central location and a set of field devices. Communication can be serial, such as over telephone lines, or can utilize a network. DNP3 protocol works the same in both cases, so the communication media for this class is not relevant. Each field device resides at a remote location, like a substation. Each such device in implementing DNP3 protocol provides data acquisition services by monitoring input information, binary states and numeric values, and sending that information to a central location or more than one, and provides supervisory control services by processing control output requests received from a central location. There are many SCADA protocols. DNP3 is one of them and is the predominant protocol used in North America. Each protocol has a different name it gives to the field devices and a name given to the central location. For DNP3, outstation is the name given to the field devices and master is the name given to the computer at the central location. A typical system can consist of communication between a set of outstations and one or more masters. The case of communication to more than one master deals with issues that are not appropriate for this introductory class on DNP3. So we will consider only the case of a single master. Actually, this basic class only has to deal with communication between a master and a single outstation. So we will make it simple by talking only about this case. As discussions in the following lessons occur, keep in mind that they apply to multiple master and outstation devices, even as we only consider the above one-to-one -one configuration. There are three types of input points common to SCADA protocols. Binary, where each point is a single bit with a state of set or reset. Analog, where each point is a signed numeric value and counter, where each point is a positive increasing numeric value that counts occurrences of something. When a counter value exceeds its maximum value, it resets to zero and keeps counting from there. There are typically two forms 
to report a value or state of an input point to the master. The first is to report the current value and the second is an event value. The current value is typically only reported when asked. An event value is the current value that existed when something significant occurred. Most significant occurrences are a change in state or value, but there can be other reasons. Events can be reported when asked or spontaneously. And there are two types of control output points common to SCADA protocols. Binary, used to issue on or off control, and analog, used to write a signed numeric value to an output point. In the next lesson, we'll see how each of these is implemented within DNP3. So that's the end of this brief introductory lesson. What have we learned? This class will talk about DNP3's use within the SCADA industry. DNP3 is a protocol used to communicate between an outstation and master. Communication can occur over a serial line or a network. DNP3 SCADA sends input information from an outstation to a master and control requests from a master to an outstation. Input information includes binary, analog, and counter data and is reported in two ways the current state or value, or as an event. Control requests include binary and analog outputs, and we have no idea yet how any of this applies to DMP3.